to enhance your developer productivity. Dev tools are developer oriented tools. Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to Think Constructive. I am Isha. In this session, I will be talking about Spring Boot Dev tools. More specifically, I'll tell you how you can make changes in your Spring Boot application and let the Spring Boot server auto restart for you or auto reload those changes for you. You need not to go ahead and every time manually restart the Spring Boot application server. This will help you to enhance your developer productivity. All right, so let us quickly start with the Spring Boot Dev Tools discussion. Let us now understand what do we mean by Spring Boot Dev Tools. So, as the name itself indicates, Dev Tools are developer oriented tools which are provided by Spring Boot. The Spring Boot framework is, anyways, very developer friendly framework. That means, developer needs to mainly focus on the business logic and rest is taken care by Spring Boot framework and in a very short span of time production ready applications can be made so this is one more addition towards that this feature is available from spring boot 1.3 onwards and the features what dev tools is providing is property defaults that means by default enabled mechanism if, if at the time of development if you want to disable them to get the quick output you can disable them using property defaults automatic application server restart that means while doing any changes in the spring boot application every time you need not to manually restart the server rather automatic restarts will happen after applying dev tools in your spring boot application it also provides additional features such as live reload global settings and remote applications debugging all right in this session i'll be mainly talking about automatic restart of the server that means whenever I do any changes to my Spring Boot application, I need not to manually every time start my application server. Rather, with the help of DevTools, I will now demonstrate how it is done automatically. All right. So let us now switch to the demonstration parts. I'll be using IntelliJ IDEA Editor for the demonstration. If you are using any other Java editor, that is perfectly fine. So I'll open IntelliJ IDEA Editor. And here I have already created an employee REST API application. Just in case if you are looking forward to know how to create a Spring Boot REST API applications, session is already available on this channel. Session details are getting displayed on your screen right now and links are tagged in the above tag section as well as in the description box below. So you can go ahead and watch this particular Spring Boot REST API development session. For this session, just to save everyone's time, I have already created this employee REST API application wherein you can see a request mapping slash employee is taken and a get API is exposed. So this get API will take employee ID in the URL and will return the response something like this. Employee details of the employee ID, whatever, will be passed in the URL are found. All right, so and I will also show you pom.xml here in pom.xml you, you can see Spring Boot starter web dependency and by default test comes whenever we generate a Spring Boot project using a Spring Initializer are included nothing else. All right, so this is my employee controller class. Okay, and this is my employee application. So I will now start this application and will show you how this application is coming up and when we change what happens. So here my employee application has come up and you can notice here you can notice a Spring Boot takes by default Tomcat as application server is up on port 8080, 8080, right? It has started my employee application on port 8080. No worries. Fine. Now, in employee controller, you can see slash employee slash employee ID is exposed. Okay. So, it should be working on localhost. So, so now let us open the browser window and see what happens. So, here is the browser window and I will just give localhost port 8080 slash employee 
slash employee ID, let's say one. What am I getting? Let me just increase this font a bit. Yeah. Employee details for employee ID one are found. Cool. This is what we wanted. Now, let us go back to IntelliJ ID editor and do some changes here. Let's say I would say employee details for employee ID, whatever ID is being passed, are not found. Okay. I want to just change this text. I have saved it. I can see in the log window, no change has happened here. Okay. And now if I will open and refresh this, changes are not getting reflected. Fine. Now let us come back to IntelliJ ID editor and see we have done this change, but no change has happened here. That means so server is not restarted. That means it's not going to pick up the latest changes. And that is where we are not able to see the changed results in the browser window. All right. In order to solve this problem, we have a Spring Boot Dev Tools. So now I will tell you how you can include Spring Boot Dev Tools and see the automatic server restart and then eventually picking up the changes. All right. So for that, I will first tell you the dependency which you should be using. So what you need to do, you need to open a Spring initializer okay from there you can just pick up the dependency which needs to be included so since i'm using maven project i will select maven here okay and i will say language as java and include the dependency here so what dependency i would want spring boot dev tools see developer tools is written very clearly here okay now I will explore this dependency directly from here. I'll go down. This is the pom.xml. And here you can see dependency org Spring Boot Framework, Spring Boot Dev Tools. This is what we need. All right. So I will just copy this dependency from here and will quickly paste it in my pom.xml. Okay. I'll terminate the server. Okay. So I'll quickly paste the dependency here. See Spring Boot DevTools dependency is available now. Now what should I do? I will do a Maven refresh so that it gets all the required jars. Okay. So it has got all the required jars in the class path. That is where we can see the tick sign here. So every dependency is now included, refreshed, fine. And now I will come back to my employee controller.java. Okay. I'll just remove and bring it to the previous state. This is what we were having earlier. I'll now bring up the server. So you can see my server is up and running. Tomcat is started on port 8080 and this application is started. Yeah. So my server is up and running. I have just placed some enter marks so that we can see the differences. So now first go back to our browser window and refresh this. I'm getting what we were getting earlier, right? Employee details for employee ID are found. No worries. Now let us come back to the editor and place not here. That means now I want to see the message as employee details for employee ID, whatever number are not found. Okay. I have written this and now I will save it. The moment I will save it, what will happen? My server gets restarted. You've noticed the changes, we'll go up, we'll see, we had placed some spaces here so that we should be able to see the difference and see here in the logs, restarting due to one class path changes. We have done some change here and it has picked up. That means whatever changes will happen to the files existing in the class path, the moment this will happen, the server gets restarted. This is what has happened here. Okay. And then my server has come up and started successfully. Correct. 
Now let us go back to the browser window and refresh this. See, the changes are reflected here. This is what we wanted, okay? So this is one minute change. Now let us do some more changes. I'm not terminating the server. Rather, I'll just put some more enter spaces so that you can clearly see the difference, okay? So I'll just say some enter, okay? And what I will do now in the request mapping, let's say I will say slash EMP ID. Okay. So now the request mapping will be employee slash EMP ID and then slash you should give the employee ID number. Okay. I've done this change. I will save it now. I have saved. Okay. Now the server should get restarted. Noticed? What is it saying? Let me, yeah. So you can see restarting due to one class path changes, fine. So that means it has picked up, it has noticed the file existing in the class path has got changed and that is where it has restarted the server automatically. I'm not doing it manually at all. Okay. So since the server has got restarted, that means logically it should have picked up the changes. And now let us go back to browser and refresh. It should not work, right? So the previous URL stopped working. What change I should do? I should say here in EMP ID. Then I should give EMP ID. Let's say this time I want to give two. Enter. Cool. Yeah. So I am now getting the desired output here. Okay, let us come back to editor and I will show you one more changes. Again, I have pressed enter. Server is still up and running. And now I will show you how you can do changes in application.properties without restarting server manually. That means I am not terminating the server. My server is still up and running. And I will now change the application server port. Let's say earlier it was 8081. Let's say I want to work it on sorry, 9999. So four times nine I have given here. And the moment I will say save. I have saved it. And now you should notice the changes here. Cool. Restarted. Correct? Restarted. So again, it has picked up even the changes of application.properties file. And this time, if you will notice, Tomcat restarted on port 9999. That means four times nine. That means if I will go back to the browser window and will try to query on port 8080, I should not get the output and that's what is happening. So what do I do now? Since I have changed the port, so I will change the port here. Okay, 9999, enter. I'm getting the desired output. Okay, so I'll go back to IntelliJ and you can see what we have done without restarting the server manually or without terminating the server. The three changes, the textual changes here in the return, the URL changes, the path changes, and also the changes of application server port for which I have made an entry in application.properties. It can be application.yaml file also. So any file you can pick up, right? So these kind of changes are picked up automatically by my Spring Boot application. That means auto server restart has happened. By default, Spring works on Tomcat application server. Otherwise, it also has a facility to use Jetty and Undertow application servers. Similar Spring DevTools will work for them also in the similar manner, the way it is working for Tomcat. All right. So I hope this part is extremely clear. And now as a Spring Boot developer, you need not to go ahead and every time manually restart your servers. Rather, by just including Spring Boot DevTools dependencies, your development time will be reduced and you will work faster. All right. I also want to tell you one more thing, just in case if you are using IntelliJ IDEA Editor, while using Spring Boot Dev Tools, initially you might face some problems because of the editor settings. So I will show you 
two important editor settings which you should know before using Spring Boot DevTools. Otherwise, it will not pick up automatic class path changes and your Spring Boot DevTools might not work on your IntelliJ IDEA editor. All right. So for that, what you need to do, you should go to IntelliJ IDEA preferences. Okay. Go to advanced settings. And in this advanced settings, this first option, compiler, inside this compiler, allow automate to start even if developed application is currently running must be selected all right because then only it will trigger automate and will pick up changes from the class path this is one another setting is you should go to build execution deployment you should go to compiler tools and must select this build project automatically only when these two options are selected, then only your Spring Boot DevTools will work on IntelliJ IDEA Editor. All right. So once you select both the options, you should say apply and say OK. Fine. And then apply Spring Boot DevTools dependencies and this will work beautifully. All right. So if you have any doubts, any questions, please ask your questions in the comment section below. Thank you everyone for watching this session. I hope you found it useful. If so, hit the like button. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel and also ring the notification bell because I'll continue bringing more and more Java Spring Boot, Spring Security and Microservices related sessions here. There are many more sessions on Java Spring Boot, Spring Security and Microservices are already available on the channel. So feel free to explore them. Also, if you want to ask anything, if you have any doubts, please ask your doubts in the comment section below and also let me know what you want me to talk about next. Thank you once again. See you in the next session. Bye for now.